Hello, this is Bruce Reviews Music and uh, today I'm in Split, Croatia at the beach. The right place to review the new Lana Del Rey album, Norman fucking Rockwell. Lana Del Rey is a 34-year-old singer from New York, currently based in Los Angeles, California. And after a very good but not that well received demo, she started her career with the 2011 single Video Games and the following up album Born to Die which was a glamorous combination of trip-hop, uh, slow-core and dream-pop and one of the best pop albums of the decade in my opinion. The following up albums were somewhere between rather good and rather boring in my opinion and uh, now she has her fifth album out. Uh, it has 14 tracks, a lot to talk about. Let's start with it. For this album Lana teamed up with Jack Antonoff, a producer who uh, came from the band, from his own band Fun and uh, he had a lot of interesting uh, producing credits over the last few years for Lloyd and St. Vincent and Taylor Swift for example. So he's one of the most interesting new producers in pop music in my opinion, especially Lloyd's Melodrama which was produced and co-written by him is a, an amazing pop album. And and uh, when the singles from Norman Fucking Rockwell hit over the 12 months before the release, it was very exciting. These were new songs for Lana, a new direction, starting with a very beautiful Mariner's Apartment complex based on uh, slow and beautiful piano chords, developing into this big, great, explosive refrain that um, is also a homage to Leonard Cohen with this I'm Your Man in the center of it. So a beautiful song, one of the best Lana songs in my opinion. And the next few singles weren't that bad either. When is Bitch, a very long song, almost uh, at uh, 10 minutes. Um, it's very interesting for Lana to go in this direction for a very long psychedelic track. And it's also kind of a foreshadowing for what was to come on Norman fucking Rockwell. The next single was uh, Hope is a Dangerous Thing for a Woman Like Me to Have. Beautiful ballad that has also these Jack Antonoff ballad influences all over it, kind of reminding me uh, of some of Lord's best songs from the last album. And another interesting single was Do In Time, which was a sublime cover, a uh, very interesting choice for a cover for Anna Del Rey, but it fits very well, very beachy atmosphere here that's also present on the whole album. But all of that culminated in The Greatest, that was uh, one of the two-part single that dropped shortly before the album release. This is an apocalyptic song, kind of, it almost paints uh, the picture of a paradise in flames. I really love this song and it seems to be heavily influenced by the um, California wildfires in late 2018. The California wildfire season in that year was one of the hardest, if not the hardest, uh, for the uh, state in um, recent history. There were among 100 people dead, so uh, these things that were also influenced by climate change are playing into this record, are playing especially into The Greatest, which is in my opinion one of the best Lana Del Rey songs of all time. And what I really love about this song is uh, the chorus. The chorus is so explosive, the chorus is so psychedelic and her singing is so exaggerated in that moment so I really love that but it's also kind of the message behind the song it uh, reminds me a lot of uh, the 2017 Father John Misty album Pure Comedy here there was also a track that was called Leaving LA and the general um, apocalyptic, apocalyptic atmosphere here is uh, very much present and uh, so it's that contrast between the beauty of the seaside that's also um, there in the video for the song and these uh, apocalyptic images that also come through on the cover art for this album. So this is really the aesthetic that Lena is going for here. But on top of that, there is also a big layer of psychedelic sounds on this album. Not only on the long song Venice Bitch, there are a lot of songs with psychedelic influences like uh, California, Fuck It I Love You or uh, The Greatest that I talked about earlier. And not that she hadn't done this before, but uh, here it's a lot more focused than let's say on Honeymoon or even on Ultra Violence. The songwriting is much better. 
And I think that's not only uh, to be credited to Jack Antonoff, but also Lana has gotten a lot better with songwriting on this album. And um, what's to be uh, credited to Jack Antonoff might be the big and great ballads on this album. Some of these ballads are really sparse and downsized, like Hope is a Dangerous Thing for a Woman Like Me to have the fantastic closer on this album and my favorite ballad on here. Uh, which also has these yeah, very beautiful voc uh, vocal melodies, these beautiful lyrics. I really like this uh, finish to the album. And it also reminds me, as I said, a lot of Lord's songs. Another ballad on this album that reminds me a bit of Lord's last album is Happiness is a Butterfly. It's kind of similar to Hope is a Dangerous Thing, but it has its own um, aesthetic to it. It's a bit more silly with the lyrics on here where Lana says, if he's a serial killer, what's the worst thing that can happen to a girl that's already hurt? Typical Lana trope, a bit silly, a bit over the top, but it fits here in my opinion. A bit more lush is a love song, a simple but very effective ballad, and it's a very romantic song like some of the best Lana songs are. And the next best American record, very well produced song with these ominous guitar tones uh, erupting into a big, typical Lana Del Rey chorus. So although there are these new psychedelic, apocalyptic elements on this album, there is also kind of uh, a bit of the old Lana left, like there was on Lust for Life, the more poppy side of Lana Del Rey, with uh, the songs that are um, a bit faster, like Do In Time, which was cover song but there are also songs like Fuck It I Love You or Cinnamon Girl which draw a bit more on these trip hop influences that her older albums had and I really like that because what was uh, my biggest problem with the last few Lana records was that they dragged a bit on because they were so slow in parts and this album has the songs to um, really get the tempo a bit higher sometimes not all the time it's still a slow and ballady album but I love that she has these contrapoints here. Uh, although I needed a bit of time to ultimately decide it, I think this is Lana's best record. She uses a great sound on here to convey personal stories and also some kind of deeper messages. And her teaming up with Jack Antonoff was the best thing that could happen to her. I think that she finally found her place in pop music that uh, this five album journey was a great thing to hear her coming into the place she deserves and this is finally her best album. I'm giving Norman fucking Rockwell 95%. This was Bruce Reviews Music reviewing Lana Del Rey's Norman fucking Rockwell. I hope you enjoyed my video. Stay tuned for the next few months.